again. All right, I think I'm gonna just do a little segment on birth control options. So there are a lot, thankfully, thank you, um, the past for allowing us as women to have options for um, choosing whether we get pregnant or not. Um, so there's a lot of different birth control methods out there. Um, remember when I was I feel like I was 16 or something like that, I got put on birth control pills, not for the pregnancy part, but for um, hormones. Like they were, I had, um, I had really bad acne, so they were like, oh, let's try this. And now it did help, however, I personally am not a fan or a proponent of anyone using anything hormone-based for your acne. Um, or really for, I, mean, I can't say broad scope, but if you're doing, my, my favorites for birth control are going to be um, anything that's not hormonal. So the pill is out. Um, IUDs that are the plastic ones for, with hormone in them are out. Um, those more plants and things that they stick in your arm are out. Um, those ones that make you have a, like only one period every blah 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 amount of time, those are out because our body's menstruation is a, a very normal thing that needs to happen in our, our world as women. So um, now I, my favorite is um, I had an IUD, but it was the copper ones. Um, so they they last for like nine to 10 years. They insert them through your cervix and um, the copper, what, how they work is the copper um, changes the pH of your uh, uterus. So it makes it a little harder for eggs to attach to the uterine wall. And because it's something in your uterus, um, it, it, like eggs don't want to hang out there with this this thing in the, in the wall. So, um, really really great it was a little painful to get in and a little painful to get out but other than that you know it's um I if I had to do it all over again I would do that the thing about it is is that it does not protect from STDs sexually transmitted diseases so if you are in a non-monogamous relationship or you feel like your partner is cheating on you or anything like that and you haven't been tested you will want to take other precautions like using a condom uh, and that goes to say with all forms of birth control, right? So the pill doesn't prevent you against stuff like that. So, um, so that is just, um, and then also if you are in a committed relationship or, or even if you're not, um, the vasectomies are, so that's the male aspect, right? They are pretty darn reversible. Like I feel like it's like a 90 plus percent reversal rate. And, um, I had a partner who, um, had one and was I had to get my IUD at the, out at the time and you know I was coming out older and I didn't want to get another one put in because I knew I'd be hitting menopause at some point so um, he was kind enough to get a vasectomy and he didn't want children either and um, so I got to watch the procedure and it was fascinating super easy and in office um, ordeal and um, so for all you men out there if you it's, it's great because women, you know, we bear a lot of the brunt of birth control and hormones and all that stuff. So, you know, if you're in a committed relationship, especially like how awesome you don't have to ever worry about, you know, having sex, I mean, having sex, you don't have to worry about getting pregnant. So it's a win-win in my opinion, if you fall into that realm. So anyway, I hope that's helpful. Oh, also, sorry, a couple more things. Um, there is that women can get their tubes tied. Um, so that is equivalent to um, the vasectomy with men. However, it's very invasive. They have to go inside, or ovaries are you know, internal. So it's a lot more, a lot more challenging. So for people that are in that situation, I would recommend that the men um, step up in that world. Um, and lastly, there is, you know, there's the pullout method, which, um, 
you know, not great. <laughs> it, you know, you can get lucky, right? And, um, but it's, uh, you know, there's, there's pre-cum and things like that, where, which still have sperm in it. So it's, it's not a, I would not rely on that if you are trying to avoid pregnancy. And lastly, there's the fertility method. Um, so the fertility method is really great. I, I, um, I studied this for quite a while um, back in the day, and I helped to educate quite a few younger women about it, and I, you should Google it if you're interested. Um, it's, it's a lot of times used for women who are trying to get pregnant, and so this is a matter of, um, there's some steps to it for sure, like you uh, record your temperature every morning when you wake up, and you test your cervical fluid, um, so, you know, and all those kind of pieces. So we can only get pregnant um, when we're ovulating. And so the, um, this is a way of us, um, sorry, I'm kind of lost here. This is the way I go. Um, so this is a way for people to tell exactly when they're ovulating and to not have sex during that period of time. And then the rest of the time, you know, pretty safe to, to have sex or really safe if you're accurate. Um, when you ovulate, your your mucus that's uh, released is going to make you a lot more slippery. So if you've ever had times where you're like, wow, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like I'm leaking or something like that. Or, you know, if you have sex and you're like extra slippery, um, that is probably a, a don't, it's not a hundred percent guarantee. So don't just go strictly by that. But, um, it is a way to, um, to tell. So when you are ovulating, your mucus will be, ex it'll be like egg yolks, but also sticky. So you can go whoop, and it like, it sticks like rubber cement kind of, that's just starting to harden. Um, all right. Anyway, I hope that's helpful and I will talk to you later.